Kentucky Bound. Hello, I'm Doug Flynn, and welcome to Kentucky Life, coming to you today from the Pasta Garage in Lexington, Kentucky. It happens all the time. We remember an actor for one character he played out of decades of movie roles, or an artist for one painting out of a lifetime of creativity. Many of the songs composed by a Covington songwriter are considered timeless classics, and they've been recorded by America's greatest singers. But out of an award-winning music career, he's now known for one song. Of course, that song is one of the most popular Christmas songs ever written. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Few people in Kentucky realize that one of the most famous Christmas songs ever was written by a man born and raised in Covington. James Haven Gillespie, he always went by his middle name, of course, was born in 1888, so he grew up right at the turn of the century in Covington. His father, uh, Will, was a laborer. His mother, uh, Anna, uh, worked as a domestic. He went to third district school in Covington. Haven would leave school after the fourth grade and at age 14 would follow his sister to Chicago where he became involved in the printing business. He arrived in Chicago, got a job as a printer's devil and a printer's devil was kind of a, a gopher. You had to do various things, get the type and get the ink and so on and so forth. But Haven always told me I had print ink in my blood. Living in this world of ink, watching and learning how other people's words flowed together would lead Haven to a profession he had not dreamed of, songwriting. Prior to the invention of the phonograph by Thomas Edison, the main source of musical entertainment for families at home was the piano. Every home that could afford one had a piano. And you've seen Edith Bunker playing and, uh, on, on TV and all that. Well, that's what families did. They stood around and they sang at the piano. That created a tremendous, a tremendous demand for music and for simple music, music that could be played by Edith. Haven discovered he had a gift for writing clever lyrics, and his sheet music that people bought to play on their home pianos proved successful. Still a hometown boy, he moved back to Covington to practice his craft, but was finally drawn to the center of the music universe, New York City and the fabled Tin Pan Alley. Tin Pan Alley was a, uh, an area of New York which was right off Fifth Avenue on 28th Street near uh, Broadway and Sixth Avenue. And uh, there were about 20 publishers there in New York City. And the reason it was called Tin Pan Alley is really interesting. What was happening was everybody was afraid you would steal their songs so they would muffle the pianos and it would hear what was going on in a tin, tin sounding uh, uh, format and so that people couldn't really pick up the melody and steal those melodies. Gillespie would meet a music composer named Fred Coots and like Rodgers and Hammerstein, the combination of Haven's lyrics and Fred's tunes would create many well-known songs of the day. In 1934, Haven's publisher called asking for a children's Christmas song. No, you better watch out, you better not cry, better not pout, I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town, one of the most beloved Christmas songs ever. But while meant to be a children's song, it was Haven's unique choice of writing environment, the New York subway trains that would lead to this becoming a song for all ages. What Haven would do is he would get on public transportation and he would write most of his songs while he was riding on public transportation. And you get a 45 minute ride, he'd have a song written by that time. Well, he happened to be on the pro in the process of writing Santa Claus is Coming to Town and he was stuck. He just couldn't get this line. And there was a young boy up in front of him and he just happened to say, well, is Santa Claus gonna come see you this year? And the kid turned around and all of a sudden Haven said, well, you better be good. And he got that line that he used later in uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been 
bad or good, so be good. Adults can straighten out their children. Better not do this, better not do that. Basically, it's saying you won't get anything from Santa Claus if you don't behave. And so from that, from that standpoint, uh, it's, it's really as much of an adult song as it is a children's song. We've got to dig deep and cover the list. Got to see that nobody is... The song was performed on national radio by the famed Eddie Cantor and became an overnight sensation. The song, of course, became one of the top ten Christmas songs of all times. There's over 800 recordings in every language known to mankind and also every genre of music. Where there's rap and there's uh, all kinds, rock and roll and whatever. And while known for this Christmas classic, Haven Gillespie would write songs immortalized by such greats as Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, and Billie Holiday. I love You Go To My Head, uh, which was one of his, his, his big hits. I probably shouldn't ever sing. You go to my head. You go to my head. And you linger like a haunted reverend. One of his songs even gained notoriety from a crime scene overseas. There was a murder that had taken place in London. And when the detectives and Bobbies came into the murder scene, the Victrola was playing a record, and the record they were playing is I'm a Little Blue for You. Just a little blue, just a little blue. Just a little blue for you. And it became an overnight sensation in England and uh, caused him to make up to $17,000 in royalties from that particular song. But every Yuletide season, people in Covington and across the Commonwealth can take pride when they hear this familiar melody written by a young man from Kentucky. Santa Claus is coming to come. 